I should have known something was off when Michael insisted we go to his mother Vanessa's house for a casual family dinner. Casual is not a word I'd ever associate with that woman. As we pulled up to the imposing mansion, Michael shot me an apologetic glance. I shrugged it off, thinking he felt bad for having me trek out to the rich suburbs on a Thursday night when I'd been pulling long hours at the community center all week. The instant the double doors swung open, suspicions crept in. The cavernous foyer was adorned with elaborate floral arrangements. Crystal chandeliers glittered above an immaculately set table for at least twenty people. "'Michael, what's going on?' I hissed, as his mother swept in wearing a silk evening gown like she was attending the opera. He avoided my gaze. Mom insisted on doing a little something special since my sister Amanda is visiting from Paris. Vanessa pulled me into an uncomfortably tight embrace, her French perfume overwhelming. "'Evelyn, darling, we're just so thrilled to have you here tonight.' She ushered us into the dining room, where Amanda and the rest of Michael's extended family were already seated. As the servants, yes, servants, began serving appetizers, I noticed an unfamiliar black sports car parked by the front entrance. It looked wildly out of place next to Vanessa's Mercedes and Amanda's BMW convertible. I leaned over to ask Michael about it, but he just smirked and told me I'd see soon enough. My unease tripled when Vanessa clinked her champagne glass, calling for silence. Before we begin, I'd like to kick off the evening with a very special surprise. She theatrically waved to one of the servants who scurried outside. Moments later, he reappeared holding a large gift box topped with an oversized bow. For you, my dear, Vanessa proclaimed with a flourish as the box was set before me. My face burned as all eyes turned my way. Michael squeezed my arm, grinning widely. Go ahead, open it, Vanessa trilled. With shaking hands, I tore off the silver wrapping paper, hoping it was nothing too extravagant. My stomach dropped when I glimpsed the crystal emblem on the long rectangular case. It couldn't be. I lifted the hinged lid, dread and confusion swirling as I stared at the polished keys inside. Oh my God, I gasped, looking back and forth between the sports car's keys in the case and the actual car parked just outside the front doors. How? We can't afford. Of course you can't, silly girl. It's my congratulatory gift to you both. Vanessa tittered in delight. Just a little token for landing such, such an impressive promotion at the city planning office, Michael. The room erupted in cheers and applause. All I could do was gape at the keys as realization sank in. This wasn't just an outrageously lavish gift meant to flaunt Vanessa's wealth. She had strings attached. Michael tried capturing my hand, but I jerked away. You told her about my promotion at work before even mentioning it to me? I demanded, heat flooding my cheeks. One little look of contrition flashed across his face before the mask went up again. Baby, I only did it because I knew you'd protest if I tried getting you something this nice with my own money. You know how generous Mom is. My throat tightened as his words registered. He hadn't even tried to surprise me. Hadn't thought to share the good career news as something for us to celebrate privately first before having his mother co-opt the surprise with her showy generosity. Because that's what this was. Not a gift, stemming from kindness and care for her future daughter-in-law's happiness, but a power play. A declaration of control over not just her son's life, but mine too. Just when I thought Vanessa couldn't get any more overbearing, she decided to turn our wedding planning into a three-ring circus. From the very first conversation about potential venues, color schemes, and guest lists, her opinion steamrolled over every preference Michael and I expressed. You simply must book the Grand Regency Ballroom, she gushed, waving around a glossy brochure like it was the decree from on high. It's where Amanda had her reception. Oh, it was an absolutely exquisite affair. I glanced helplessly at Michael, silently begging him to shut down his mother's unsolicited input. He offered a sheepish grimace in return. The Grand Regency is beautiful, Mom, but way outside our budget. We were thinking of having a smaller ceremony at that new event space in Old Town. Vanessa pursed her ruby-red lips in sheer disdain. Old Town? Really? Michael, you can't be serious. Just a tatty little area riddled with dive bars and tourist traps, hardly befitting my son's wedding. Her gaze landed on me with blatant judgment. Unless that's the sort of ambiance Evelyn prefers? 
my cheeks flushed, but I refused to be baited into losing my temper. It's not just about ambiance, Vanessa. We'd rather invest our money into building a life together instead of blowing it all on one night. Invest, hmm? She echoed the word like I'd uttered an obscenity. Well, what better investment could there be than your actual wedding? Why, it sets the entire tone for your marriage. You'll want to host all the right people in spectacular taste befitting your family status. My family status? I fought the urge to laugh in her perfectly made-up face. Vanessa seemed to sense my skepticism. Her dark eyes flashed with cunning. I haven't had the opportunity to offer my gift to you both yet, she declared in a sickly sweet voice. But since you seem so concerned about money, Michael, perhaps it's time I extended that generosity sooner rather than later. A sudden thrill of foreboding slithered down my spine. Vanessa retrieved a large manila envelope emblazoned with the logo of an upscale real estate firm. Mother, what's this? Michael asked, eyes going wide. They shifted between her and the envelope like he already suspected what was inside. Open it, darling. I insist. Michael's hand trembled almost imperceptibly as he withdrew the stack of documents. His face lost what little color it had. Mom, these are the deed and mortgage papers for your beach house property, the one on Ocean Drive. Why, yes, Vanessa chirped. I've decided to transfer ownership of that exquisite estate to you, as an official wedding present. Ice flooded my veins. That property was worth millions, accessible only to the ultra-rich elite. There was no conceivable way we could ever afford the taxes and upkeep, let alone live there comfortably on our salaries. My eyes darted between Vanessa's smug expression and Michael's kicked puppy look. The realization struck like a physical blow. This was her true game. Sure, the Grand Regency and a lavish wedding ceremony would be a nightmare, but that ostentatious beachfront property? That was her golden leash, yanking us into a life of indentured servitude, doing her bidding. My throat felt too tight to speak. I waited for Michael to laugh off the cruel joke, to refuse this twisted gift that came with so many unspoken strings and demands. But he didn't refute it. Not even with a simple... Thanks for the generous offer, Mom, but Evelyn and I need to talk it over first. The silence stretched on until Vanessa broke it with a triumphant peal of laughter. I thought as much. Don't worry, we'll go over all the details as the big day draws closer. After all, what's mine is yours now. She patted my hand with mock tenderness. In that moment, I knew nothing about my future was truly mine anymore. A few weeks after Vanessa's twisted gift of the beach house— Michael took me out for a quiet dinner downtown, one of our favorite low-key date night spots away from his mother's prying eyes. I figured he likely wanted to discuss plans for our future living situation without her overbearing input. I couldn't have been more wrong. Evelyn, you know how much I love you, right? Michael started once our wine glasses were refilled. His expression was solemn in a way that made my heart clench. I covered his hand with mine, tracing the calluses from years of pencil gripping. Of course I do. What's going on? Taking a fortifying breath, he reached into the inner pocket of his blazer. I've been carrying this around for weeks now, trying to figure out the perfect moment. With trembling motions, he extracted a black velvet box and flipped open the hinged lid. Nestled inside was an enormous diamond ring that had to be at least two carats, easily costing more than my entire annual salary. Oh my God, I gasped, reflexively withdrawing my hands. Michael, you can't afford that. That, that rock is insane. His smile dimmed. What, you don't like it? Mom helped me pick out something she thought you'd love. The air whooshed from my lungs. Of course she did. I should have known Vanessa's fingerprints were all over this proposal. Just another calculated power play to solidify her hold over our lives before the wedding. Michael mistook my shocked silence for displeasure over the ring's extravagance. Look, I may have let Mom take the lead on this to keep it a secret from you, but we can always reset the diamond if you'd prefer a different style, or return the whole thing if the size is too much. I just wanted it to be something spectacular, something as amazing as you deserve. Michael, stop. The words came out sharper than I intended. He reared back, hurt flickering in his eyes. Evelyn? I opened and closed my mouth, struggling to find the right words to explain the pit of dread and disappointment churning in my gut. This was supposed to be our moment, our decision as a couple. I tried again, more gently. 
not something orchestrated by your mother yet again. She's already trying to control everything about our wedding and our future home. And now our actual engagement? Can't you see how messed up that is? Michael's forehead creased in unmistakable defensiveness. I just wanted to make you happy. By doing what exactly? Proposing with a ring hand-picked by your mother who's hell-bent on taking over our lives, and on top of that you kept it a secret from me that she was involved? We're supposed to be partners, Michael. Equal partners making decisions together. His shoulders hunched. Look, I know my mom can be a bit... intense sometimes. I let out an astonished laugh. A bit intense? That's the understatement of the century. Shaking my head, I pushed away from the table and grabbed my purse. This ring, the stupid beach house, the whole over-the-top wedding she's trying to force on us, it's all about control, and you're just handing her the reins over every aspect of our future. Michael gripped my wrist with surprising force. Don't do this, Evelyn. Don't ruin the best thing that's ever happened to us. I fixed him with an incredulous stare. By standing up for myself and our independence as a couple? Sorry. But if that's enough for you to throw in the towel, then I have to question how solid our relationship really is. Hurt flashed across his features, rapidly morphing into anger. But I didn't stick around for whatever argument he planned to unleash. I yanked my arm free and strode toward the exit, leaving him behind with the gaudy remnant of his mother's manipulation glittering mockingly on the tabletop. In the aftermath of Michael's disastrous proposal, I expected some pushback from Vanessa. What I didn't anticipate was the relentless barrage of manipulation tactics she deployed to wear me down. It started small, comments here and there disguised as casual observations. Darling, have you thought about highlights for the wedding? That mousy brown is doing you no favors. Or, that's an interesting outfit choice. Amanda found the most gorgeous Chanel dress for her bridesmaid luncheon last year. I'll have to dig up the pictures. Underhanded digs meant to undermine my confidence and self-worth, to make me feel inadequate as her son's future wife. As if on cue, Michael would chime in to defend his mother's cruel remarks under the guise of playing peacekeeper. She's just trying to help Ev. You know how excited she gets about this stuff. I didn't confront the passive-aggressive comments at first. I figured ignoring them would eventually get the message across that her put-downs weren't going to shake my resolve big mistake. Vanessa's tactics only escalated from there. Suddenly she was injecting herself into every aspect of my daily life, no matter how insignificant or personal. My kitchen wasn't up to her white glove standards of cleanliness? Oh, Evelyn, you simply must let Rosa stop by twice a week to give a proper deep cleaning. She's been serving our family for decades. My pile of work totes and oversized carryalls in the entryway were an eyesore? Here, let me send someone from the design firm over to have a proper hall tree and storage unit installed for all your belongings. She critiqued my wardrobe. She judged my friends. She even had the audacity to remove framed photographs from my apartment that she decided clashed dreadfully with her envisioned aesthetic. The encroachment on my independence and personal space was suffocating. I felt like I was being slowly erased from my own home, bit by bit. The final straw came the day I walked into work to find an ornate vase of exotic orchids and a hastily scrawled note. From Vanessa, these should brighten up your drab little office. Exoxo. I slammed the card down on my desk, causing the heavy ceramic vase to wobble precariously. Enough was enough. That evening after dinner, I leveled Michael with the hardest look I could muster. We need to talk about boundaries. Your mother has gotten completely out of control inserting herself into every corner of my life. I expected at least a twinge of remorse or understanding. Instead, he met my gaze with utter indifference. What's the big deal? Mom's just trying to help spruce up your place a bit before we... Spruce up my place? She's systematically redecorating and unsolicited overhauling my entire living space. Michael held up his hands in a placating gesture. Babe, you're overreacting. If the flowers were too much, just tell her to back off. She'll get the hint, eventually. My jaw clenched hard enough to grind teeth. Are you kidding me right now? I've dropped hints for weeks about her overbearing behavior, and she just steamrolls right over them. That's exactly the problem here. He pinched the bridge of his nose like I was the one being difficult. 
You know how she gets when she's excited about these sorts of things. Just let her have her fun with this stuff. It'll die down after the wedding once she knows you're not going anywhere. There it was, that nauseating refrain again. Act passive, rationalize Vanessa's irrational meddling, downplay the strain it caused. Just like always. My blood boiled at his blatant dismissal of my very valid concerns. So I'm just supposed to allow her to trample all over my boundaries, my independence, everything that makes me my own person. Until she's convinced she's got me under her thumb like you? The words were out before I could check them. Michael's face went alarmingly blank in that way it did right before the storm hit. Don't say things you'll regret, he said in a soft, warning tone. I wasn't about to be cowed into submission, not even by the man I loved. Not this time. No, you need to hear this, damn it! I don't know what kind of traumatic past made you susceptible to your mother's poisonous control games, but I refuse to let her do the same to me. To us. With every sentence I uttered, the quiet ferocity in his expression gave way to barely contained rage. She's just not trying to control you, he bit out through gritted teeth. Mother just wants what's best for this family. This family? I laughed without any mirth. Last I checked, we aren't even married yet, though at this rate I'm questioning if we ever will be. His face twisted then, contorted with betrayal and hurt, and hurt. I braced myself for the blowout fight that was inevitable. But he didn't yell, didn't throw accusations or try justifying his mother's actions further. He simply rose from the couch and walked out the front door, letting it slam shut behind him with stinging finality. After Michael's abrupt departure that night, I didn't hear from him for nearly a week. Vanessa's toxic vapor trail had seeped into every cranny of our relationship, leaving a suffocating miasma in its wake. I tried calling, texting, showing up at his place, anything to clear the air and regain some semblance of sanity. By the fifth day of agonizing silence with zero response, I started to spiral into a dark pit of insecurity and doubt. Had I been too harsh in voicing my frustrations? Maybe all this stress with his mother was just cold feet manifesting itself in irrational ways? Michael had been pushing the wedding planning himself lately, so clearly the idea of being my husband wasn't the problem. Right? I nearly jumped out of my skin when a text from him finally pinged through while I was grabbing lunch in the community center's cramped break room. Mom booked the Pine Ridge Country Club for a pre-wedding couple's shower this Saturday. Your presence is expected. That was it. No apology for ghosting me, no attempt to address the disastrous argument that had precipitated this whole mess. Just a terse summons to make nice with Vanessa at yet another over-the-top event she was orchestrating. My fingers trembled as I typed out a reply. Not happening. She's gone too far trying to control every aspect of our lives. We need to talk and set boundaries before anything wedding-related moves forward. Three little dots appeared and disappeared as he typed and retyped several responses. We can discuss after the shower, he finally sent. I bristled at the utter dismissal of the gravity of our situation. That's exactly the problem here, Michael. You keep putting off these discussions while your mother keeps plowing ahead unchecked. This wedding, this marriage, none of it will work if you're not willing to prioritize my concerns over her whims. His next text came through like a lead weight. You're overreacting again. White-hot rage lanced through me. I hurled my phone across the break room, gouging a deep crack through the plaster wall. One of my co-workers poked his head in with alarm, but I just shook my head and fled into the hallway in search of somewhere, anywhere, I could scream in private. By the time Michael and I finally reconnected face-to-face -face in his apartment three days later, I was so emotionally spent I could barely muster the energy to fight anymore. So what now? he asked, slouched in that way that aged him a decade. Are you... are you trying to call off the engagement? I dragged in a steadying breath. Not yet, but we're dangerously close if your mother doesn't get out of our lives and stop sabotaging this relationship. His expression clouded over that knee-jerk defensiveness rising. She's not. Save it, I cut him off with a crisp motion, but this is your final chance, Michael. You either start setting ironclad boundaries to keep your mother out of our marriage, or this whole situation is going to detonate. His jaw tensed and released in rapid succession. I don't know if I can promise that. I—mom means well. She really does. 
upsetting her in this way could unleash her wrath in ways I've never known before. I couldn't help but bark out a sardonic laugh. Her wrath? Are you kidding me? And what about my wrath over being undermined, demeaned, and controlled by her at every turn? Doesn't that warrant giving a single damn? He winced, already backing down. Pathetic. So that's it, then? I pressed, letting out a humorless chuckle. This whole marriage attempt is already dead before it even starts, our entire future subsumed by your mother's vicious need to maintain control. And in that moment, staring into his crumpled, beseeching face, I felt a strange sense of calm settle over me, because I knew with certainty exactly where this relationship stood. There would be no negotiating, no further concessions or chances for Michael to grow a spine. He was in too deep, a grown man still shackled with invisible chains to his master. I gave him one last considering look. When you decide which path you want, appeasing your mother's narcissistic ego, or actually being a true partner to me, you know where to find me. With that, I turned on my heel and walked away, shutting the door on the whole toxic saga before I got sucked into the vortex any deeper. In the weeks following my ultimatum to Michael, I didn't hear a peep from Vanessa, which should have been a relief. Instead, an uneasy sense of foreboding knotted in my gut, like the heels scuffing quiet before a Category 5 hurricane made landfall. I didn't have to wonder what the brewing storm was for long. About a month out from what would have been our wedding date, Michael stopped by my apartment unannounced. His expression was pinched, mouth pressed into a hard line like he was stealing himself to deliver tragic news. "'What's going on?' I asked, unable to mask the wariness in my voice. He swallowed hard before meeting my gaze head-on. You're not going to like this. Of course I wouldn't. Where Vanessa was involved, nothing was ever simple or happily resolved. Mom, she arranged for us to take a family trip to the Bahamas later this summer. For our, um, honeymoon. My stomach bottomed out so hard I felt dizzy. You cannot be serious right now. Michael winced, hunching his shoulders against the blast of outrage he knew was coming. She already booked a private villa on a private island, insists it'll be the perfect fresh start for our new marriage. Our new marriage? I sputtered, heat flooding my cheeks. He rushed on like a kid ripping off a band-aid. Look, I tried shutting it down, but— But you're still too weak to stand up to her. The shrill accusation ripped from my throat before I could rein it in. Holy shit, Michael! We've been on the rocks for ages, and your mother waltzes in with this harebrained fantasy of tagging along on my non-existent honeymoon like some sort of twisted apology gift. His eyes slid away guiltily. I clapped a hand over my mouth, the full brunt of what was really playing out here smacking me upside the head with sickening clarity. This wasn't just another power play by Vanessa to insert herself where she didn't belong. This was her caustic brand of punishment for my recent defiance. I lowered my hand, lips curving in a humorless smirk. Unfucking believable Your mother is actually trying to sabotage our already disastrous wedding before it even happens, isn't she? Just to make some deranged point about who's boss. Michael opened his mouth, probably to spill more worthless placations and excuses, but I didn't allow it. You know what? I'm done. My voice dropped low and laced with venom. Done with your crippling inability to be a full-grown man in charge of his own life. Done cowering under your mother's toxic thumbscrews just to keep her happy. Done with Vanessa altogether and her pathological determination to run every aspect of my existence into the ground. I jabbed an accusatory finger his way. But most of all, I'm done being a naive fool who clung to some idealized notion of marrying into your family and having it all magically work out if I just tried hard enough. That ship has sailed, Michael, and I'll be damned if I let it drag me down to a watery grave with it. His expression crumpled, the inevitable plea slipping from his lips. Evelyn, please, don't say that. Don't give up on us. With a bitter laugh, I shouldered past him toward the door, already making a mental inventory of what would need boxing up for moving out. The only one who gave up on this relationship was you, I tossed over my shoulder, the moment you let Vanessa turn it into a circus act of her deranged ego-trip fantasies instead of standing by the partner who loved you. I shrugged on my coat, mouth pressing into a grim line. I'm taking the out you never could, Michael, and giving you what you seem to want most, 
a life free of compromise so you can remain your mother's perpetual victim. Michael tried grasping my arm, his expression a crumpled mask of anguish, but I sidestepped the gesture with cold finality. Goodbye. I sincerely hope all that enabling of hers ends up being worth it. I slipped out the door and out of that whole twisted chapter of my life for good. I refused to be just another tragic conquest lapping in Vanessa's wake, battered and decimated by her narcissistic games. There was only one way to decisively cut those tethers once and for all. A nuclear strike, taking out the heart of her manipulation before she could inflict any more casualties. And I already had a masterfully savage plan brewing. For weeks, I kept my head down and played the role Vanessa always envisioned, the chastened, obedient bride-to-be who would tow the line, all while meticulously compiling evidence of her relentless machinations to undermine my relationship and hijack mine and Michael's future. Financial statements, emails, texts, voicemails. I gathered every scrap that proved the insidious ways she'd leveraged her wealth and status as a weapon to control her son and sabotage my life. By the time the evening of what was supposed to be our ill-fated engagement party rolled around, I had an airtight dossier compiled. Yet I strode into the opulent country club ballroom that night without any evidence in hand. Instead, I clutched the crisp edge of an ivory envelope emblazoned with the return address of Vanessa's Tony Country Club. Inside was a single sheet of vellum stationery containing coordinates to a private cloud storage folder, a folder I'd painstakingly uploaded all her dirty laundry to ahead of time. Vanessa swept toward me in a shimmering gold sheath dress, false graciousness practically dripping off her like toxic vapor. Evelyn, darling, you made it after all. Of course. I demurred, pasting on a sickly sweet smile of my own. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Her lacquered mouth stretched in an approximation of warmth that never reached those cold, calculating eyes. How perfectly delightful of you to come celebrate with us. I was beginning to worry you'd developed a case of cold feet. Not at all, I assured her. In fact, I have a special announcement of my own to make. Vanessa's perfectly coiffed eyebrows arched in surprise. Is that so? Oh, yes. I slipped the ivory envelope into her heavily bejeweled hand before she could protest further. But first, everyone should hear it so there's no confusion. Her expression tightened fractionally as I stepped away, gliding through the crowd of well-heeled guests grasping flutes of champagne. If I could have everyone's attention for just a brief moment. My words cut through the hubbub of polite mingling like a hot knife. Startled faces swiveled toward me. Michael's included from where he stood with his sister Amanda. He paled, no doubt scenting the distinct aroma of imminent catastrophe. No going back now. I lifted my chin with a fire quieted too long raging in my soul. I know you were all eagerly anticipating news of an impending wedding between myself and Michael. A murmur rippled through the crowd, prompting me to raise my hands for silence. But first, I feel I must come clean about an even bigger celebration that should be happening here tonight. That got their undivided attention. Vanessa's gaze bored into me with shrewd intensity from the edge of the ballroom. I returned the look with relish, ready to ignite this powder keg once and for all. You see, we should really be toasting Vanessa's incredible accomplishments in single-handedly orchestrating the dissolution of what could have been a beautiful marriage. A startled gasp sounded from somewhere behind me, no doubt from Amanda recognizing the opening salvo when she heard it. I didn't let the interruption throw me. Most mothers dream of ensuring their children's happiness on their wedding day. But Vanessa? I threw back my head with a wild peal of laughter. Well, she dreamed bigger than that. She's expended every effort, with her money, status, and indomitable will, to decimate my relationship and future with Michael before it could even truly begin. The ballroom erupted in a torrent of shocked whispers and uproarious denials, but my gaze remained rooted on my target, watching in sadistic delight as the blood drained from Vanessa's artfully made-up face. That's a vicious lie, the shrill cry burst from her ruby-painted lips, but the tremor in her voice betrayed her disquiet. Is it? I cocked my head in mock wonder. I have evidence that says otherwise, including detailed records of every appalling string you pulled to try isolating Michael from me and all but forcing him to choose his mother over his future wife. A muscle ticked in her rigid jaw. 
I knew that look. She was going for the jugular with denial and intimidation. It wouldn't work this time. You are the one exhibiting deranged entitlement. She thrust the envelope back at me, crisp vellum fluttering. If you think I'll entertain this grotesque parade of your petty revenge fantasies for one moment longer— Oh, this is so much more than fantasy! I cut her off with a saccharine smile. Plucking the envelope from her grasp, I ripped it open before her and scattered the single vellum sheet to the ground. The coordinates were printed in stark black ink, stark against the ivory paper. That little code is the key to unlocking a fully compiled record of your years-long campaign of financial manipulation, emotional blackmail, and incendiary meddling in mine and Michael's relationship. Half the ballroom was gaping in rapt silence now, the other half engaged in hushed speculation over what digital wonders those innocuous numbers could possibly unseal. Vanessa looked like she'd been struck, chest heaving in harsh pants. Panic flickered in her gaze as she registered the very real threat looming before her so perfect world. I leaned in close enough for her to smell my breath. I trusted you to treat me with respect and kindness, Vanessa, to embrace me as family and give your approval for Michael and I to forge our own path together happily. But your narcissistic need for control became a terminal cancer that infected every single aspect of our lives. A horrified silence crystallized around us. I could feel the weight of hundreds of gimlet stares searing into my back. But in that moment, I didn't care about any of them. I cared only about ripping the mask off Vanessa's twisted facade once and for all, so the blinding truth could disinfect this infection like a scorching ray of light. So, no, I purred with undisguised relish. There will be no fabulous wedding this weekend, after all. Just your long overdue, a catastrophic downfall, and a freedom I'll savor basking in for the rest of my days, you pathetic, grasping shrew. Then I turned on my heel and stormed away, leaving the appalled crowd and the smoldering embers of Vanessa's tarnished legacy burning in my wake. In the aftermath of my scorched-earth revelation at Vanessa's ill-fated engagement soiree, the fallout was as catastrophic as I'd hoped. I'll admit, there was a petty part of me that savored every lurid headline and society gossip rag depicting the unveiled monster Vanessa truly was. Pictures of her humiliated, sputtering face as the truth bomb detonated made me queasy with vindication. All her pretentious affluence and manicured prestige crackling to ashes in that single glorious conflagration of truth. Her vast property holdings and assets systematically stripped away by investigators for unlawful financial practices and coercion. It was too delicious. Michael weathered the fallout in relative silence, falling off the grid completely for months after my revelation party from hell. I wondered if part of him felt ashamed for being so blind to his mother's depravity. Or maybe the appalling evidence of her machinations hit too close to home, forcing him to finally confront head-on how he'd enabled her toxic behavior for years. I tried not to dwell too much on his inner turmoil. Michael was the architect of his own emotional prison. I'd done my part in demolishing the warden running the entire twisted operation. Instead, I poured every ounce of my newfound freedom and energy into my career at the Community Outreach Center. If Vanessa's diseased influence had any positive outcome, it galvanized me to devote myself more ardently to helping others in need. So many vulnerable people out there lacked education or resources to escape the cycles of poverty, domestic abuse, and generational trauma. I could relate more than most would ever realize. The mind games, the gaslighting, the soul-eroding deprecation of identity. I'd been on the receiving end of those toxic manipulation tactics for years. With another philanthropic windfall from an anonymous donor, I helped expand our charter to include more advocacy programming resume-building workshops, employment fairs, legal consultations, any resource I could leverage to provide disadvantaged members of our community a toolkit for agency over their own lives. You're unstoppable lately, my boss, Carolyn remarked one afternoon as we hashed out budgets for the next fiscal quarter over rapidly cooling coffees. I shrugged, mouth quirking wryly. I guess you could say I was rudely awakened to the sobering reality that none of us should ever take our independence for granted. The words hung heavy between us, loaded with implications I could never voice. But I didn't need to elaborate for Carolyn's pensive nod to indicate she understood the spirit behind my renewed zeal. 
if not the details. Overall, I didn't regret much about the shockwave I'd set off in Vanessa's life. After being subjected to her endless machinations of control, watching everything she'd built and wielded like a bludgeon get dismantled brick by brick brought a sorely needed reckoning. Besides, she still had more money socked away in offshore accounts than most would earn in three lifetimes. It wasn't like I'd bled her completely dry and left her utterly destitute. Really, the losses I'd wrought were more existential than material. The undoing of her polished, inviolable image, the peeling away of that imperious mask of status and old money privilege to expose the Machiavellian manipulator beneath. The delicious part? Most of Vanessa's precious society circle turned on her, too. Links to the damning evidence I'd compiled circulated like wildfire across multiple gossipy social media channels. Avant-garde magazine spreads about her, impeccably curated taste in home furnishings were scrubbed from existence. Country club memberships were swiftly rescinded. No amount of her personal wealth could insulinessa from the unassailable truth destroying her carefully constructed facade of moral superiority. It was like a million tiny public shamings unfolding in slow motion. I couldn't have orchestrated a more satisfying reversal of fortunes if I tried. The Wicked Witch deposed and disgraced by, by her own unchecked hubris and villainy. As for my role in it all, well, that delicious irony wasn't lost on me. I'd played the part of the virtuous, aggrieved heroine to utter, surgical perfection. The revelations I'd unleashed were neither petty slander nor exaggerations, just a scathing illuminate of reality from which Vanessa's diseased psyche could no longer hide. Karma really can be a brutally ravaging bitch. And I was her most devoted usher, happily guiding that scorching reckoning straight to Vanessa's doorstep before sauntering away from the flames unscathed. Did I have some lingering guilt or sleepless nights second-guessing whether I'd gone too far? Perhaps. But in those darker moments, I'd simply remind myself how narrowly I'd escaped being utterly consumed by Vanessa's toxic strain of narcissistic domination. How close I'd come to surrendering every last scrap of my autonomy and sense of self on the twisted altar of her depravity. Then the nagging remorse would vanish in a merciful puff of catharsis. Because ultimately, by defeating Vanessa, I'd saved the most precious part of myself from annihilation. And that was a debt payback could never rebalance.